Good morning, everybody. So timing is timing the market is everything, right? Listen, if you want to skyrocket, if you want to excel in this business, if you want to build wealth exponentially, you have to time the market. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jay Helms. And if you're not familiar with my story, I've been actively investing in real estate since 2014. And since I've grown my portfolio to 328 units and did this while working a full time job and helping my amazing wife truly is amazing. Uh, also extremely hot. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, didn't see the Facebook post I made yesterday, uh, to raise our three incredible kids. Now I am just one of 38.6 million Americans unemployed due to COVID-19. And I, as long with her advice, right? Uh, we have decided to focus on real estate investing full time. So today I want to talk about three things. Number one, uh, timing the market. Uh, number two, my big win from yesterday. And number three, my one thing that I have to get accomplished today uh, if I don't do anything else. So uh, let's cue the promo music, promo intro, and I'll be right back. All right. So, um, by the way, good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. I'm live streaming on both those. If you're on Facebook, if you're sticking this out, there's some errors that are popping up on Facebook. So I just want to encourage you to go over and subscribe to YouTube. You're going to see this. This is day 29 of the 30 day challenge. I put on myself to go live. Now I'm going to continue doing live, uh, events or live streaming, but it's not going to be daily. Uh, it's going to more likely be weekly. Uh, in addition to publishing the podcast and everything that uh, we've got going on. But yeah, if you're watching on Facebook, I apologize for for them. I don't know what's going on, but it's kind of in and out. Uh, I don't think it's me. I think it's you. <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, anyway, we're going to keep going. Hopefully, I'm recording this, and, and uh, if it doesn't come out, I'll redo it. We'll... Get in your hands, because what I want to talk about today is is pretty important, right? Is I so when I started doing the YouTube streaming, um, I've had many people ask me, "Hey, how did you get started?" Right? Similar, you and I look appear to be the similar age. Uh, we have similar family size, but how did you get started? What did you do, right? And most of the time, uh, my typical answer has been, I explained the first few deals that I got involved in, and and I kind of sent them some links to a blog post, uh, which you can find at w2capitalist.com. And that's it, right? I just kind of send those off. But I got to thinking about this. And by the way, thank you for asking the questions. I encourage anytime you guys want to ask me anything, please do. Just put it in the comments. Uh, hit me, Give me a thumbs up. Uh, good morning, Cindy. Thank you for letting me know that Facebook, is live, uh, Facebook Live is fine on your end. I don't know. Maybe it is me. Maybe it is me. Um, but... Yeah, so ask me anything. I am not uh, good at dodging questions and uh, somewhat too transparent to my detriment. Uh, so anyway, uh, the most recent question came from Rob Harwood on Facebook. So Rob, thank you for bringing this up again. Uh, but to, to answer the question, how I got started and how I've been able to do, you know, add 328 doors to our portfolio in the last five and a half coming up on six years, it's pretty simple right? You can skyrocket the number of units and exponentially build your wealth by timing the market. Uh, you absolutely make money when you buy. Uh, you've probably heard that before. If not, I'm glad I can introduce you to that concept. You absolutely make money when you buy. And the only way to do that is be in tune with what the market you're looking at investing in is doing. Uh, something you re need to realize is that Market cycles are market specific, right? By that, I mean what happens here in the Florida panhandle doesn't necessarily have to be parallel with what's happening in California. 
Um, but that didn't keep me from picking on David Green from Bigger Pockets in the video that I'll post a link here uh, pretty shortly. But, you know, and what's happening in California may not be parallel to what's happening in New York. It's market cycles are market specific. So you have to be in tune with what your market is doing, right? So one of the things that I want to do, and I, as I scramble to get my notes together this morning, so this is day 29 of day day 30 of doing these YouTube streams. I didn't know what I was going to talk about until Rob asked me that question this morning. So I kind of scrambled, or he asked me last night, I guess, and um, uh, I didn't see, I don't know if I saw it. Anyway, it's been a long night. Uh, number three is uh, decided to be a rock star. She was up to like 2 or 3 a.m. And then she was up at 6, 30, 7. So, uh, yeah, good times. Um, but, yeah, I I put my nose together for this. I want to kind of skip around. It's going to be a little choppy this morning. But I want to start out with giving you a pro tip, right? If several people are around you who have historically been dismissive to real estate investing or been dismissive to your REI efforts. Uh, if they're starting to get excited and making comments, well, yeah, I want, I want to start investing. Let's I'm looking at this property over here. You should act like a white tailed deer in the woods who just heard a branch snap or, or you got a whiff of a strange smell in the air. By that, I mean, pause, look up, raise your white tail up, which if you're not a hunter, it means danger, right? And just take a pause. Don't take off running yet, as most deer will when they when they hear that sort of thing and they flap that white tail up and they take off. Don't take off running just yet. Just pause and try to gain clarity on what, why this has happened. Maybe by them being around you, you have convinced them that it is time for them to get involved in real estate investing. There, maybe there's something else other in their life that has charged them to say, oh, okay, I don't want to depend on just my W-2 for the rest of my life. I need to start investing. All those are good signs, right? But when these folks, as happened to me six to eight months ago, start saying, hey, I want to get involved in real estate investing, they start looking at deals. And no matter what I tell them about how bad of a deal this is, or, or I don't really position it that way. I say, here's why I wouldn't buy that, right? Or here's why I wouldn't buy that at that price. Um, when they start looking past that, now let's, let's, pause for a minute. I tend to get advice who, from people who are successful in where I want to go. Right. So not everybody's like that. That's okay. But if I want to go from 328 to a thousand units, right, which is certainly a goal. Um, actually it's bigger than that. Um, but if I want to go to a thousand units, I'm not going to go to somebody who has 5,000 units and tell them they're doing it wrong. I'm not going to do that. That happened to me. Right. So uh, this person actually was a couple people. Remember, if you've been following along, I managed to the trends. So first time's anomaly, second time's a pattern, third time's a trend. Well, what started trending pattern started developing six to eight months ago where folks were, I wouldn't say coming out of the woodworks, but they were starting to come around and say, <clears throat> sorry, I gotta flip my phone off, starting to uh, fl flip my phone over, starting to go off. Um, I would say they came up, started coming around. They would ask me about these properties and I would say, here's why I wouldn't buy that. Here's where we are in this market, in this cycle. Um, here's why I wouldn't buy it for that price. If you desperately want to buy it, make an offer at, at X and they would say, but it's not, I'm not going to get it for that. Great. You don't need to get it then. But they, they went with it anyway, right? Now it'd be interesting to follow up with them in three or four months uh, about that. But what a, trying to say is if that starts happening just take a tactical pause right and try to figure out why they're so excited are they just excited because they're seeing all this things are starting to skyrocket the last thing you want to do is be the person that's stuck on the titanic right and i feel like a lot of people who have bought in certain markets over the last three to four months they ignored that the ship was going down and it was taken on water and they're going to drown here pretty soon uh quite frankly that's kind of a evil vivid message but anyway um if you don't have people in your life that are constantly looking at markets constantly investing in real estate what i'll do is in the replay you, you come back on the youtube replay i will post that link up here about how to improve your circle to get the right people around you that can also like you now you're in a group of deer right if everybody's white tail starts going up everybody takes off running you probably should do the same thing so that's what i mean by improving your circle um, but anyway, 
let's talk about market cycles, right? The one thing about market cycles, they are lagging indicators, uh, which basically this just means only sometime in the future will we actually know where we were in a cycle at any given time, like today, right? Uh, now everybody has their theories, everybody has their crystal balls, but this is where the risk comes into play, right? The more you know about the, the, the more you know about the market you're in and the more you've studied the market, the higher your risk tolerance can be because quite simply, you're making a well informed, a more educated decision, right? Than someone who finally watched that, that right HGT flip, HGT flip. Hang on a minute. Speaking of tactical pause. So yeah, number three was a rock star last night. I've already had a cup of coffee. Had to go to the hard stuff. There is no rum in this, but there should be. Um, maybe I'll take care of that. Maybe that's my one thing that I'm going to take care of after this. Um, just kidding. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a pirate. Uh, yeah. So that person who watched an HDTV flipping show, that sh it struck a nerve with them, right? And then all of a sudden, they want to do it. They can do it. By the way, I'm talking about myself there, uh, circa 2006. Uh, which is why my white tail perked up six to eight months ago, right? People started coming out of the woodworks that, uh, after the video, yes, sir, Paige, after the video, good to see you here, buddy. Um, my white tail started going up because this started happening. People who were in my position in 2006, and I don't talk about that a whole lot because that's my fault start, right? And the more I talk about it, the more it actually people come across and say, but you had a false start in your real estate investing. And then 10 years later, eight years later, you got back into it. I'm like, yeah, because this is, I just didn't have all the right information. Uh, and I feel like I do. Right. Or I feel like I do now. I'm definitely more well-educated, better educated, uh, now on what the real estate market is doing than I was, um, in 2006, quite frankly, it is night and day. Right. Um, but my opinion, and this is not financial investment advice, right? I am not a financial advisor, uh, but my opinion is where, where we're at in the markets that I invest in currently, we're at the top. Now, what does this mean, right? Um, this means I'm recognizing that I was at a good party. It's been time to leave. It's time to leave before another drink and happens and we go streaking through the quad. That's all I'm saying, right? Uh, now, taking a tactical pause doesn't necessarily mean, um, quit, right? It means get some rest, take a step back, certainly work on my patience, right? So, cause my BHAG is to build 300 years of generational wealth. And I cannot do that by sitting on the, the buying sidelines, right? So part of that strategy right now, or at least the second part of that strategy right now, the number one is being patient. Uh, the second part of that strategy is to continue to underwrite properties and offer, based on how I believe the market and, and subject property uh, will be performing in six months from now, which means I'll be more conservative, which means, true example, um, there was an 18 unit building for sale here in Florida. List price was 845. Uh, I didn't offer my final invest, but I started at 700,000. So we're now negotiating on that and we'll, we'll see what happens to it. I'm not gonna budge because I don't think this property deserves much more than 700. And my plan there is I think it's going to sit on the market for a while. I think this owner is going to get frustrated knowing his situation. And in six months from now, I can probably get it less than 700. And at that price, it's going to be a hell of a deal, right? But I want to show you some graphs. If you're not familiar with revenue, uh, revenue market cycles, um, show you a couple different graphs here to help educate you on what I'm talking about. And this one comes from, uh, Mueller, who's a real estate finance person back in 2016 is when this was published, but it stands true for the test of time, right? So there's four different phases when it comes to, um, the market cycle, there's four different quadrants, right? Phase one is recovery. Phase two is expansion. Phase three is hyper supply. Phase four is recession. Right. So, and you can kind of look at what each one of those are. Um, we are definitely somewhere in phase two. 
I don't think we're in, in uh, phase three. I don't think we have a hyper supply. Uh, I, I think this curve uh, over the next six to 12 months is going to be a little bit flatter because I, I don't think we still have enough supply, but I also don't think that um, the things that are going on with the economy with the 40 million people who are laid off, which by the way, I got an alert right before um, I hit the live button that uh, unemployment has dropped 1.4%. So 13.3% uh, was the unemployment rate that was reported apparently this morning, which means Americans are starting to get back back to work. I still don't think that it's going to be a, a switch that flips out, uh, flips the economy back on. And those stimulus packages are still out there that are going to expire on July 31st, uh, unless Congress does something about it. So I still think there's there's room to uh, slide down the recession uh, pit, but I don't think we're there yet, right? I think it's coming. We'll see if I'm right or wrong or if, or if David Green's right or wrong. Uh, but this is different the different market cycle quadrants. Now, the interesting thing about this is typically this is on a little bit of a scale, right? You can't really see this. And even though I'm using my pointer, I don't think you guys can see. No, you can't see my pointer, um, my, my mouse pointer, is that the, the phase one recovery, that yellow diamond, is not parallel or in the same line as phase four recession. It's usually tilted, right? So usually where, where we bottom out on a recession is usually higher than the previous one, right? Uh, it's gonna it's gonna affect appreciation. Things are gonna keep going up. Um, so let me switch to this graph. There's another different way to look at different cycles. You you often hear of, especially in the single family space, um, seller's market versus buyer's market. Think about the same different uh, quadrants, right? Recovery, expansion, hyper supply, and recession. We have definitely been in a seller's market for quite some time. I would say we're at the gray triangle on this graph and um, things essentially in um, in Pensacola, right, where I focus the most uh, is shifting to a buyer's market. Houses are sitting on the um, housings are sitting on the market for a long time. They're staying listed for a long time. Prices are dropping. Um, so there is a slide that's coming. Right. Um, I wish they were as fun as roller coasters. And they are. If you are. Uh, if you buy them right, right? If you buy up here at the gray triangle in the seller's market and you sell down here in the blue square of the, the buyer's market, rough day for you, buddy. I'm sorry. Um, so I want to show you kind of what I meant by how that graph's tilted a little bit, right? And I look for, because I, again, I was scrambling to pull some notes here together this morning. And I couldn't find anything on real quickly or a quick Google search. Everything was focused on California. That's where a lot of appreciation happens, right? Uh, so I grabbed this graph. I couldn't find anything real quick on Florida. I'm sure it's out there. It's something I need to be studying as well. But if you look at this graph, then this is a um, appreciation index from 1987 till uh, 2017. Now, remember, this is a lagging indicator. If I would have dug out a little bit longer i could have probably found something that was up to date to at least the beginning of 2020 but not to date right because it's a lagging indicator it takes a while to process all the data but if you look at uh, what most of us now know as the great recession what happened right before that was the uh, peak of the single family home uh, buying index not just in san francisco but also the u.s index so thank you paragon real estate group for for including both those lines in this graph um but you can look at, I wish it wasn't so wavy, but if you just look at the United States index, right? The green line right there. It was a good run for a long time, right? From, from um, good long run, which is where I think we're headed, right? I think we are headed, this, if this graph expanded over to 2020, it's gonna be closer up here, right? Uh, to, oh, you guys can't see my pointer get better than this it'll be closer to 225 250 right what i think is going to happen with everything that's going on with the economy um and whatever thing i'm seeing in my local market right in panhandle florida we're going to end up with a more of a recovery that's flatter right uh it's going to be closer to what we see from the 1989 uh, san francisco earthquake to basically the dot-com peak and peak and crash Right, I think it's going to be a little bit more flatter. 
the roller coaster ride on the way down may not be as steep. Uh, and then when we start to come back up, I don't think it's going to be such a, such a high hill climb as well. Um, the other thing I want to, this is probably my most favorite graph of all. Uh, it goes through the emotions of that same market cycle, right? If you did not listen to the podcast that really was released earlier this week where I had Mark Hindeman on, uh, the title of it was fear of missing out, right? Uh, don't let the FOMO, uh, happen to you right now. You're seeing, don't be the guy like I was in 2006 and you're seeing all this stuff that happens. Uh, people are buying these properties. They feel like they're getting this great deal, whatnot. They're in the thrill category right now, right? Some of them may be in euphoria. But my prediction is in the next next couple of months, there are going to be some folks in some markets that are going to start having the anxiety. They're about to go down this roller coaster ride, uh, which again is not as fun when you're when you buy it the thrill and euphoria, and you have to sell at uh, the point of maximum financial opportunity, right? Point of maximum financial opportunity is the point where you can start buying. Again, these are these are lagging indicators, uh, so you don't necessarily know when you're at the bottom until we're years or months down the road, right? So what I'm focused on right now is I fully believe that if you can buy somewhere between desperation, right? Now don't think these are people who bought, right? But if you can find if you can find properties in this valley, the valley being from desperation to optimism. Let me go back to this market cycle quadrant piece. Oh, nope, wrong one this one same here right so this graph uh i really wish you guys could see my pointer from the last half of the financing bubble right to the market recovery in 2014 so from 2009 to 2014 if you can wait until that happens you're going to look like a freaking rock star right you're going to be able to say hey i only have one unit right now but in five years from whenever we get past this little bump, uh, excuse me, this valley, or we start seeing that we're definitely going into this valley, if you can wait for that to happen within five years, you're going to be exponentially in a much better place than if you try to get, in, get into it right now. I think a lot of folks are going through this cycle right now. They have this fear of missing out. If I don't jump in, prices are going to go up. I just don't think that's the case. I think what's happening right now is we're on the Titanic. And people who are thrilled, euphoria, they're going through this. They think, you know, there's no way things are going down. They at least need to be putting it on their life jacket. They at least need to be putting, um, making their way to a, to a survival raft because it's going to be one hell of a ride in the next six to 12 months. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I would like to say that um, we made – we, we made it to our 328 units because because we were lucky, right? Now, some of that does come into the better better point to make is if you think about the real estate bubble that happened in, that topped out in 2008, 2009, and we went to that valley. In 2010, my wife and I started looking to get back into and buying, right? It wasn't until 2014 that we bought our first deal. So we studied the Pensacola market and to get to know everything that was going on before we started buying in Pensacola. And those four years of waiting, while we did miss out on some opportunities, was some of the best education that we've ever experienced. So what I'm saying is if you take some time between now and the end of the year, so now until Christmas, which my son and I were talking, he was wanting to know the other day about uh, how much longer till Christmas. And he was, he was going to let – Santa pick his Christmas presents this year. So anyway, um, but yeah, take some time, take a tactical pause. If this is happening in your market. Now there are other markets, um, that don't are not uh, susceptible to this right now, right? It is buying season in your market and my market is not, um, in California. I don't think it is either, but I don't really know anything about that market. Uh, <laughs> But just take a tactical pause, right? Don't let FOMO, the fear of missing out, make you uh, create a bad business decision. If you feel like you're educated, 
run it by an experienced investor who is doing the kind of investing that you want to start doing. And if they tell you, here's where I would alter that deal a little bit, just listen to them. Just listen to them. Um, but that's, that's the meat of today's meat of today's, uh, message before I get into my big one, my big win. And my one thing from yesterday, I want to point out, um, point out that this hasn't come up all day, right? Or I think it did at the very beginning. So what, please give me a thumbs up. If you, if I said anything that you've liked, uh, give me a thumbs up, let me know. So as I continue to do these lives, um, not going to be one every day, right? But as I continue to do these, probably one a week, uh, I know what kind of material to bring you and hit subscribe and hit the alert button. So you know that, uh, when that happens, uh, also, if you don't know about deal check, it's over here, right? This, if, if you don't know about deal check, check them out. I'll post the link to where I did a demo is like a 10 or 15 minute demo, uh, up here on the YouTube replay. It is one of the easiest pieces of applica easiest applications I've used to underwrite deals. Um, I, it is the one I used for, um, the one I told you I made $700,000 offer on versus the 845 list price. If push comes to shove, uh, now this is being represented by a broker. So I don't, I don't have contact with the owner quite yet, but I have done in the past, actually last week, I submitted a, a, a offer, um, to an owner. It was an eight unit and I sent him the link that deal check provides, uh, says, here's why I came to this conclusion. Right now we haven't come to a deal, but I think it just helps with the negotiation process. I'm a reasonable investor. If you're a reasonable seller, here's why I underwrote this way. Let's make the deal happen. If not, that's fine. We'll talk again in a few months and see what happens. Uh, by the way, if you sign up for deal check, there is an affiliate link below. Use the promo code W2CAP because that will give you 25% off of whatever plan that you're, you use. It is free to sign up and use it. And then it only calls when you want to start unlocking pieces of the software. So it's a really, really good idea. You can use it for a lifetime free, right? If you don't unlock some, uh, need to unlock any pieces. So do that. Also still pushing, uh, our commitment to, for operation underground railroad to raise $50,000 for them this year to get more information about operation underground railroad text W two CAP to four, one, four, zero, four. Also talk to your CPA uh, or your tax guy about um, how the CARES Act allows you to take certain nonprofit donations away from the top line revenue uh, instead of the bottom line. So it's uh, the CARES Act introduced some really good stuff with that, but I'm not the CPA uh, that you need to be talking to for that kind of advice. But all right, so I'm going to get to my big win. So big win from yesterday. I tell you my big wins, but not to brag, right? In most cases, you're probably thinking, uh, this, that's not a big win at all. Um, sorry, I got alerted to something over here. Squirrel. Uh, but the idea is to recognize those big wins as part of a mental game that if you hear them enough and you're around enough people that are doing it and st st recognizing that the momentum you have around you will become apparent and you need to take advantage of that. So we do this every week in the mastermind. Uh, I'd love to see your big win in the comments below. It could be from yesterday. It could be from the last week, but my big win from yesterday is I'm wrapping up this 30 day challenge of live streaming tomorrow, right? So tomorrow's the last day. The other 30 day challenge I have going on right now is the hashtag 50 with will, which is essentially 50 push ups a day for 30 days. Uh, you know, sun's out, guns out kind of thing. Um, but yesterday got to get that beach bod no, it's not happening. I'm dad bod all the way. Um, but yesterday I recognized my 30 day challenge, uh, and that is to submit one LOI per week for the next 30 days. Now there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, most of these opportunities are going to be off market deals. I've start, already started calling them. Um, I've getting about a 1%, uh, rate where they want to entertain an offer. The rest of them are slamming the phone down on me or just being rude. Uh, well, that's okay. Cause then it gets fun for me. Um, but yeah, recognizing that that is my next challenge that I want to get out there. And I would love to know what your next 30 day challenge is. If you don't have a 30 day challenge, find one. I am encouraging the people in the mastermind group to do, uh, do a 30 day challenge of cold showers with the concept of the miracle morning. I think it's a concept of the miracle morning. Anyway, transformational book. 
But coach hours are one of those things that just wakes me up and gets me ready. For, it's weakness leaving the body, right? Or weakness washing away from the body. Um, but yeah, I want to know what your uh, 30 day challenge is. My one thing for today. So same with the big win. I'm not telling you to, to brag, right? I'm just trying to help you understand that when you have that big hairy thing that you need to get it accomplished, you need to get it accomplished next. This is one of uh, this is a concept from Jay Papazan's book. Um, yes, he has a really cool name. Uh, that if you focus on that one thing, then the other tasks that you have are wanting to do for the in, entire rest of the day seem obsolete or they're just not that important, right? So pro tip, uh, if there is something you're dreading doing today, get it done right now. No need to even finish this video. Just go do it. Uh, it's, it's going to free up your mind, uh, to, cause the other thing is if you postpone it, which if you're postponing it, chances are you've postponed it for days and it's weighing heavy on you and it's going to continue that you're going to build it up to this. It's this worst thing, uh, that you're going to do. And then when you finally do it, you're like, Oh, it's not that bad at all. So just get it done now and free up that mental space to accomplish even more. Right. But my one thing for today is, um, last week I submitted an LOI. And I need to follow up. Uh, I am on my hunt for my next apartment complex. I'm specifically looking for uh, 15 to 200 unit apartment complexes from Mobile, Alabama to Jacksonville, Florida in the B2C class range. If you have such a property, I'd love to look at it, right? Uh, if you're interested in partnering with me on one of these deals, I'm interested in chatting with you. So the link below, you'll see a link in the description below on YouTube for Palmetto Stone Properties, which is the legal entity that we use for the investing side of our business. Um, Go to that website. There's a couple of different links for forms, depending on what your interest is, if you're selling or you want to partner. Um, but get in touch, right? Reach out and um, we'll get to know one another and see if we can make a deal happen uh, on either side of that table. So that's it for today. I've got to go follow up with this guy. He told me he was going to reach out earlier this week and it's now Friday. Uh, it's time for me to call him, right? But that's it for today. Guys, make it a great week and get after your one thing next.